start building some, some very powerful things. Not too difficult, right? Let's do something really, really hard. Hmm. How about an audio conference bridge? That's going to be really hard, right? I mean, companies charge thousands and thousands of dollars th for these things. How hard can it be? Really hard. I'm, I'm sure it's just going to be one line of code. <laughs> All right, I give. So let's do where we are, uh, the 6505 here. Now there's a couple of different applications we can use. There's an older one called Meet Me. And with Meet Me, there's a couple of different ways you can configure it. You either configure the rooms ahead of time in a configuration file called meetme.conf, or I'm lazy, so I just give it a name here. I'm going to call this Astrocon. And you use the D option here to tell it that if that room doesn't already exist, ah, just create it on the fly. Create it dynamically. Okay? That way you don't have to muck with configuration files and, and that sort of thing ahead of time. Just, uh, you know, just build it on the fly. And let's, let's, no, let's add a couple more options to that, just for the fun of it. Um, I want to, be, to, to play music on hold if you're the only person in the, in the, in the, on the line. And I want it to make some noises when people enter and leave the conference. I want to just give us some little audio cues that people are coming and going. Okay? So we can add some different options there. And again, if you wanted the complete list of those options, what would you type? Core show application meet me. And it shows you that the M is plays music on hold, the I uh, is announce user join and leave. Okay? So let's try it here. Uh, dial plan reload. What did I make that? 6505? I thought I did. Okay, so let's try this. After the tone, say your name and then press the pound key. Jared. Thank you. Press one to accept this recording. Your message has been saved. You are currently the only person in this conference. Hey, Sean. 6505. So I'm hearing the groovy hold music here, waiting for Sean to join. Sixty-five oh five, please. Awesome. Hey, awesome. How you doing? Lame is in the conference now, too. Awesome and lame. Awesome. <laughs> cool, huh? In, in, the, the way it is right now, um, it's, it's set just for you start the conference and it goes until the last people leave. You can do other things with a marked user. That when the marked user enters, then you know, then, then people can start talking, and once he leaves, the conference is gone. Um, there are some things with, with being able to set time limits on conferences and those sorts of things, a little, little more advanced than we want to go into today. But um, it's, it's more of an ad hoc thing than, 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 than real strict that way. Um, just just to, to let you guys know, though, there is a, a newer uh, conference bridge application out there as well that tends to work a little bit better in certain situations, especially if you, have, if you have timing related issues with virtual machines and those sorts of things. And that's the ConfBridge application. So core show application ConfBridge. And ConfBridge um, works a little bit differently in the way that it, it mixes the audio together. That tends to be a little more efficient and, and quite a bit better in most circumstances. So you may want to play with that as well. Um, it, it always creates the, the, the conferences dynamically on the fly, so you don't have to go use the D option to dynamically create those conferences. So that still limits you to that one extension or whatever that you set up. So that's only one room. So say you want a total of four rooms available. You, can you make it automatically like proxy first? And then you, so you could do this. 
Yeah, like, is that the only way, or? No. Um, let me introduce something else that we can do in the asterisk, uh, in, in the asterisk uh, scripting language, the idea of a pattern match. Okay? What if we wanted to match multiple numbers all in the same extension? So, you know, if we want four different Meet Me conference rooms here. The way that you tell asterisk that you're going to do a pattern match is by putting an underscore in front of the extension number. So this is, and it's not an extension name, but it's a, it's a pattern match. And then we can use different characters within the, let's, let's set these up separate here. Let's do 660, and then I can say X, for example. And the X means any, any digit 0 through 9. Okay? So this would give us 10 different conference rooms. Now, the problem here is they're all pointing into the same into the same conference, right? Well, we probably want them in separate conferences. So one of the things that Asterisk will automatically do for you when, you when you use a pattern match like this is it will create a variable, a channel variable called extend to tell you what extension was dialed. So in this case, we can say extend. And if you dialed 6601, then this would be go to Astrocon 6601. If you dialed 6602, it would go to Astrocon 6602. So there you go. Still one line, now you have 10 conferences. Tricky, huh? Very tricky. Okay? Yeah. Exactly. Or there's a, there's, there's a dial plan application called Meet Me Count or Conference Count that you can use to, to, to check the count before you go into the conference room. And you, know, you can set it up so that you, you dial a certain extension and it finds the next available empty one and tells you what number that is, those sorts of things. It's just logic you could script into your dial plan. Sorry, what's, that? what's the limitation? There, there, there is no size limitation hard-coded into it. In practical terms, a, a couple of hundred participants per call depending on you know, depending on how, how beefy of a server you have and that sort of thing, whether there's transcoding going on. Um, I've seen conferences go as, as high as three or 400 users. In that case, most of them were muted and none of them were doing transcoding, uh, but and there was only two or three people who were actually talking in the conference. But, and you could create different extensions with different options, so some people come in and they're muted and other people can actually talk, you know, those sorts of things. But there's no, there's no hard-coded limits. I mean, if the software is open source and free, why, why hard-code limits into it? Question over here. Is the Meet Me app still included just for compatibility? Absolutely. Yeah. We're not getting rid of Meet Me. We're just adding a second option there in ConfBridge. It just ha happens to work better in a few situations. Um, it, de it, it depends on the situation, but it's smarter about the way that it does the mixing. For example, if there's only two people in the conference, it doesn't bother setting up a conference bridge and mixing the audio. It just sends the audio straight back and forth. When the third person joins, then it says, oh, now I'm in a situation where I really do have to mix the audio. So for smaller conferences, it's much more efficient. It also does some things with grouping together people um, of the same codec, if I understand correctly. So if there's five participants, they're all using G722, then it just transcodes that audio once rather than five different times. That's my understanding. I, I don't know much more about it than that. You could go dive into the documentation or ask Josh Culp, if you see Josh Culp around here. Um, he, he's the one that wrote that, and he can give you more details on that. All right. Anybody having fun yet? I'm having fun. So the question is, can each user have their own conference? Absolutely. Have as many as you want. They're free. We, we, when I worked at Digium, that was, uh, that, that was one of the things, is everybody had their own conference bridge. Why not? I mean, you know, I could have, I could have 10 if I wanted. You know, they're free. They don't cost anything. Makes it very handy, especially for standing meetings. Each meeting would just have its own conference bridge, and you'd always know to join that particular conference. Question over here, and then I think there's one back here. Sure. No, it's not too bad. Sure. Well, there's two things that we have to do. First, we have to set up the queue itself. Oh, so, so the people who didn't, add, didn't hear the question, the question was, can I set up an ACD queue, an automatic call distribution queue? And, and do that in one line in the dial plan. The answer is, well, I can set up the part that puts the caller into the queue in one line in the dial plan. But then we need to go into queues.conf and define the queue itself. Should we do it? All right. Let's see if I can put Sean on, 
uh, uh, hold queue here. Okay, so uh, first thing we want to do, yeah, grab, a, grab a phone there. Um, we want to go into queues.conf. Again, just like all the other configuration files here, there's going to be a general section at the top. And then if you scroll down, you'll see here's an example of a, of a, of a queue called mark queue. I'm going to call it something different. I'm just going to call it sample. We can set what, what music on hold class do we want to use for hold music. I'll set that. Set some announcements. The next thing we need to worry about is how do we assign calls to the, to the agents that are answering those calls. Are we going to assign them round robin? Are we going to assign them randomly? Are we going to ring them all at the same time? The long, longest available, fewest, you know, least recent. Yep, we can do that. Skills-based is a little trickier. There's several different ways to do that. You can either script the skills out in the dial plan and then uh, and then assign them that way. In but the easiest way is because queues are free and you can have as many as you want. You create each queue for each different skill set, and then people can be part of mo more than one queue. So let's say you're doing languages, and, and you may have an English-speaking queue, and a Spa Spanish-speaking queue, and a French-speaking queue. And I know Rafael back there speaks both Spanish and English, so he could be a member of both of those queues. And then a call will come in, and it'll tell him, oh, this is an English call, and he'll answer in English. And a call comes in in, in Spanish, and he says, hola. All right? So that's, that's another easy way to do that. But there's, there's lots of different ways to do that, depending on the type of skill you're trying to Try to break down, but the easiest way is just build a multiple queues. They're free. Question here. Absolutely. Not only that, you can actually have asterisk tell the caller before they get connected. I mean, tell the agent before they get connected to the caller, sales or support or English or Spanish. So you can have it tell them right in their ear. They don't even have to look down. Just says English, and then they say hello. They can do screen pops. You can do all that as well. Yep. Lots of different things you can do. So let's let's set up a queue here. So in this case, I'm going to use the my favorite random. Why do I use the random um, distribution? Because I spent a couple of years uh, managing a bunch of call centers, and no matter what you set in here, people are going to complain. Oh, I'm not getting enough calls, or I'm getting too many calls. So you set it random and say, Hey, it's the computer that did it. I don't have anything to do with it. <laughs> Shuts people up. It works. I'm sorry. Um, you can set a service level. So, you, so, so for, for management purposes, you say, hey, I want all my calls to be answered within, in this case, 60 seconds. Um, and so we can keep track of what percentage of the calls were answered between, you know, within that time. Um, you can set some different things as, as penalties and um, all kinds of things. We won't worry about the, the timing stuff. Um, you can assign weights to different queues. So if a person is in multiple queues, then they'll, they'll be more likely to get calls out of this queue than this other queue. Um, you set wrap-up time. So in this case, the, the agent has 15 seconds after the call to finish up typing up their notes and take a, take a quick drink of water before they take the next call, those sorts of things. Um, we can set a maximum number of callers that we want to enter the queue. In this case, maybe we want to say, hey, don't let more than 20 people into the queue. And there's all kinds of things we can set here. I'm going to skip a bunch of these because they don't really apply. Um, it would, we'd call the queue application from the dial plan. The dial plan would immediately go on to the next priority in the dial plan. And it would set a special channel variable called queue status to let us know that the queue overflowed. And then we could send them to a different queue or send them to voicemail or whatever we want to script there. We can set, set some announcements here. We'll just play with some of these just for the fun of it. We can announce their hold time. So you can say, you know, your, your estimated hold time is 3 minutes and 20 seconds, you know, those sorts of things. Um, do you want to announce their position in the queue? Sure, why not? Um, we'll round to the nearest 10 seconds. And comment some of these settings. So you can configure which sound prompts get used for all these messages. And what else do we want to set here? 
the last thing that we need to set